Hi guys, this is Wesley from Paradigm Cooling and in this video I'm going to share the evacuation secrets that my lecturers never told me. And by the end of this video you will know the fundamentals that took me more than 20 years to discover. Also, if you like our content, please click that like button and subscribe to our channel for more quality HVAC related content. So what is evacuation? Well, it's the process of removing atmosphere and moisture from the system to minimize the chemical processes that give rise to system component failure. And why is this important? Well, air contains water vapor and any moisture present in the system when mixed with the refrigerant oil creates an oxidation process that gradually eats away at the compressor winding over time. Now, with all that said, let's dive into the science behind the secret to the evacuation process. Because a vacuum pump cannot physically remove water from the system, we must first change its state from a liquid to a vapor, which will then allow the vacuum pump to pull the vapor from the system during the dehydration process. By lowering the pressure in the system, we are effectively lowering the boiling point of any moisture still present. And because that boiling point has dropped well below the current ambient temperature, the moisture will simply boil off and the resulting change of state then allows the vacuum pump to remove that vapor from the system thereby facilitating the dehydration process. A system pulled down to 500 microns, for example, would have a water boiling point of about minus 25 degrees Celsius, which typically would mean a difference of about 50 degrees Celsius between the boiling point and the ambient temperature, and therefore most of the moisture would be boiled off and removed from the system. If you were to place a water droplet on a smooth surface and touch that droplet with the edge of a piece of paper, you could move the water around the surface by just moving the paper. This is caused by the bonds that exist between the water molecules and the paper, and this is the same bonds that causes moisture in a system to stick to the inner walls of the copper tubing used for refrigerant transport in those systems. Very often those bonds are so strong that the boiling of process isn't enough to detach the water molecules from the tubing wall and this will present as an erratic decrease in atmosphere displayed on the micron gauge. This is most seen in older systems where the inner walls are lined with oil due to the normal migration of oil during system operation. In such a case, it's recommended that you perform a triple vacuum using dry nitrogen, which will assist in detaching the moisture from the inner walls and speed up the evacuation process. During the evacuation process, the inner walls of the hoses being used provides a level of friction that negatively affects the rate at which atmosphere is removed from the system. That rate of transfer is known as the conducting speed of the hoses, and it is determined by the material that the hoses are made of, the diameter of the hoses, and whether the hoses are contaminated with things like oil or refrigerant. It is therefore of utmost importance that you use wide diameter vacuum dedicated hoses for your evacuation process, as they are constructed from material that have a high rate of transfer, as well as weaker covalent bonds with the water molecules, which result in easier detachment from the hose wall of any moisture present in the system. All material has a degree of permeation and the quarter inch refrigerant transport hoses that are often used for evacuation as one of the highest rates of permeation in the system since it was not designed for the negative pressures experienced at very low vacuum states. They will therefore consistently fail vacuum decay tests as they leak atmosphere and when combined with their low conducting speeds they should never be used for the evacuation process. Besides being a lubricant for the internal parts of the vacuum pump, the vacuum pump oil also acts as a seal that allows the pump to pull down to very low micron levels. For this reason, it's important to run a vacuum test on the pump even when the oil seems to be clean. Clean looking oil often doesn't provide a proper seal and would therefore need to be replaced before attempting to evacuate the system. The vacuum pump should be attached to a vacuum gauge and run down to a vacuum level of 25 microns to confirm a proper seal inside the vacuum pump.
The valve goes in the core to ensure the valves are some of the most restrictive components when it comes to pulling a vacuum quickly. If left in the system during evacuation, they render your vacuum pump CFM rating nearly irrelevant due to the narrow opening that they allow the pump to pull atmosphere through. It is therefore of utmost importance that the valve cores are removed before connecting the vacuum hoses onto the system. Failure to complete this step will turn a process that should take mere minutes into a slog of several hours. Refrigerant gauge manifolds also have high rates of permeation under negative pressures and are used for refrigerant transport and therefore should also be avoided during the vacuum process. The vacuum should be performed without the gauge manifold and only after the vacuum is broken with refrigerant should the gauge manifold be attached to the system under positive pressure conditions. This is done to avoid letting atmosphere into the system during the attachments of the manifold. Anyway guys, that's the video and if you found this video useful, please click that like button and subscribe to our channel for more HVAC related content. Until next time.